This conference will now be recorded. Cool. All right. DV, what is up? All right, man. So Hey man, how you been? I'm good. I'm good. I know I know you can't see me just for the uh the uh, I guess the audience that's uh that may be listening to this. Uh, but um you know, definitely want to thank you for your time, you know, to take some time and kind of talk about some of this stuff. And uh, again, for those that are listening, uh, time is up the yet. I know Eric has to get get going here pretty soon. But what I normally do, Eric, I kind of give an intro of my of myself, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that now, and then I'm gonna kind of dive into you a little bit a little bit after. So yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay. So what's up, everyone? My name is Pat Brown. I'm a financial advisor here at Edmonds Duncan Investment Advisors in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, played football at the University of Kansas. Played uh, outside linebacker. I started for three years, uh, so loved the time I, I had there at the uh, University of Kansas. And one of the things that I'm very, very passionate about is financial literacy for student athletes. And so I started doing this series of interviews with former student athletes with the hopes that um, that message can resonate with current student athletes to see the success and failures of those that have gone before them. Uh, so um, I want to go ahead and introduce them. Like I said, I know Eric can't see me, but I had to do some cyber stalking on my man just to, you know, have have something to, to say about him. Uh, so this is a little bio that I came across for uh, Eric. So over the course of his career, Eric ran for 1,481 yards and 13 touchdowns. But it wasn't until his senior year in 1997 that Eric uh, became the feature back and got the bulk of the carries in the Kansas backfield. When he arrived at KU, he was behind June Henley, LT Levine, for the first three years. But it wasn't until he became the main man he flourished running for 796 yards and six touchdowns. He went undrafted, never signed as a free agent with the NFL. However, there was a sporting lifeline for Ben. He plays apparently for the Kansas baseball team in his freshman year in sophomore seasons. But with professional football dreams didn't come true, the Kansas City Royals took a flyer on Van and he played a few seasons of minor league baseball in the Royals organization before calling it quits after his loan season uh, at single A Charleston Alley Cats. Welcome, Eric Van. So is that is that about accurate? Is that? Yeah, that's accurate. It okay. sounds, sounds okay. good. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, the other thing I want to really, uh, I guess, kind of uh, touch on real quick before I, I kind of dive into this is just the definition of financial literacy. Um, I've been doing this before every, I guess, uh, interview just to kind of uh, notate that I think when student athletes hear financial literacy, I think it has kind of a bad connotation, kind of makes guys kind of think, okay, well, you know, are you, are you saying that I'm dumb or stupid? Um, and that's that's not the case. So financial literacy, the definition is uh, the possession of a set of skills and knowledge that allows an individual to make informed and effective uh, decisions with all the financial resources. So having said all that, and getting that all out. Um, so Eric, tell me a little bit about, you know, when you came to KU, freshman, sophomore year, kind of your mindset as far as money was concerned. You know, we're getting our little stipends here and there, getting a little bit of change. Um, did anyone ever talk to you about budgeting, credit, uh, savings or anything like that? No, I mean, my first two years, definitely not. Um, gosh, I think I was so focused on you know, the two sports that I was playing and, and, and grades and things like that, that, um, you know, my parents really never talked to me. It was, it was, you know, I was kind of in a fortunate position for me the first couple of years where I had a little bit of money that I had saved from odd jobs in high school, but I really just used that, um, probably for my first two and a half years for just a little bit of spending money here and there, but nothing formal. Yeah, uh, you know, nothing that I could say that I could take to today and say, hey, by freshman year, I learned this. Right. Nothing like that whatsoever. So then as far as uh, some of the decisions you made while in school, was it kind of a trial and error type of situation where you, you know, you spent X amount over the weekend, you broke. Uh, so just ask your mom and dad or are you just kind of like, hey, I'm stuck, stuck like Chuck. No, nah, you know, it was uh, it was a lot of trial by air, but it was a lot of uh, ask parents. You know, <laughs> right. it, it would be Friday. I'd have the, I'd get my little stipend from the money I'd earned. I'd get it on Friday, and it was gone by Monday. 
And if I needed anything during the week, if you remember, Pat, our first two years, we had lunch, right? Yeah. You could go down and have lunch. Our last two years, you couldn't. Yep. So then once my dad found out that I really wasn't eating lunch because I didn't have no money, I spent it during the weekend. <laughs> okay. He put he, he he made sure that I had money to eat for the week. So that was a fortunate thing that 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 I had to deal with. I never had to really confront saving or how I was using it or anything like that. So you think uh, obviously moving forward, um, I don't know if I want to say it's a detriment because I had this a similar conversation with another uh, guy, he mentioned the same thing, you know, parents were, you know, fortunate. He had parents that were able to do that. But later on, it, it kind of bit him a little bit as far as not having those fundamentals or those habits in place. Would you say that happened to you or are you just kind of fortunate to kind of go past that point? Well, it, it happened at a, a, a point, but I was forced to learn because I got married at 22. Mm. So my wife and I have been married 22 years. So my last year, I started looking at money magazines and trying to teach myself. Okay. And, you know, just like at 22, I started out like a little tiny mutual fund where we only did like $25 a month. Sure. You know, I did a lot of things like that, but it, come to find out, like, I didn't really know anything but what I was reading. I didn't have any experience. So once again, we go through the trial and error portion, you know, and you're 22, 23 years old and you're married and you're doing trial and error. And I think most <laughs> of us are doing trial and error. Sometimes you err a heck of a lot more than you don't. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Um, so what were kind of uh, some of your worst financial financial decisions you made uh, in college and what were some of the best ones? You know, was it, uh, you know, just spending too much at the, the Burge party? I mean, what? Uh... Yeah, I would just say, you know, you know, I try to tell my son he's four. He's fourteen, going to be fifteen. <clears throat> I spent all of my money on things that I quote unquote thought were fun, right? Yeah. And never took the time really to say, okay, I'm eighteen or nineteen. Like this is going to be over one day, or it could not be. But I never prepared myself for it not to be, and that's probably the worst decision uh, that I had. It's just you don't really think about it ending. You don't really think about it at that age that you're going to be 25 or 30 or 32. And, you know, and then when you first get your first job and you get your first paycheck, you tend to tend to do some of the same habits that you had in college, which was you spend <laughs> it on stuff that is fun. Right. And yeah, you figure yeah. out like, I actually have to pay the electric bill this month. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, things you like that. Great. You know, yeah. I got car payments. I did, I'm married. I mean, you know, those things. So it definitely didn't help me the way uh, I was brought through college. You know, I didn't feel like there clearly wasn't anybody at the university. Not that they didn't want to. Not that we didn't right. have support. But there wasn't anything directed to help any of us in that manner. Hmm. Yeah, that definitely is true. Definitely true looking back. Um, so my next question, actually, so, you know, looking back in college, and I, I think you kind of touched on this, but what would you wish you would have done different in regards to dealing with your money? Um, is it just a matter of savings or just kind of educating yourself uh, a little bit more? Well, I think it's both, but I, you know, at the end of the day, it's really about how do you create habits? Yep. And I wish I would have start, you know, you, you play football, right? You you work out, you create good habits, you know, you get results. It's the yep. same thing. The same thing with money. You create good habits. You you start to you try to get the results you want, and the sooner you learn to do that, or at least take an interest into it, the the better your initial adulthood will be for sure. Yeah. No, I, I agree 100 percent. That's definitely been a, a reoccurring theme as I've, I've been doing these these interviews. Um, and this question, again, kind of touches on some of the stuff you mentioned before. But how has the habits you formed in college affected your life after college? Well, I would say uh, the habits that I had in college, it, it like I said earlier, it it affected me quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, one. You didn't. I didn't have the habits. Two. I got married at an age where 
you have two people that really didn't have great financial habits, right? So we probably wasted a heck of a lot more money than what we needed to. Uh, <laughs> that's for sure. I mean, we know that, you know, and yeah. and then finally we just sat down. We started kind of going through a financial advisor, getting some ideas. But once again, we had to unwrap the habits that we had created before, which that's the toughest thing to do when you're used to doing one thing and just not thinking about another. It's hard to hard to change that gear. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. No different than, like you said, working out of training. Yeah. Uh, same, same concept. Um, so as we're kind of rounding uh, to the end here, um, you know, what are some of the pitfalls that uh, you would hope your story uh, could prevent for some of these young student athletes that, you know, hopefully are watching now? I mean, what would you say to, you know, young man or young lady? Well, I, you know, I'd say one, obviously, you're in college, you know, you need to take advantage of that time. You know, mm -hmm. what's fun is, uh, fun is not being broke on a Monday morning. Like, <laughs> you know, I mean, you look back on it, it's like, how do you, I guess, how do you carve your time out to where you can still do some very responsible things to help you out for the future mm -hmm. while still having, fun throughout college and being able to enjoy the best of both so when you get out you've started to create those habits yeah um that's the thing that like you know my son he's a freshman he's a really really big time football player he's if he continues doing what he's doing he's going to have an opportunity at the next level so yeah. we're creating habits with him from a financial standpoint right now too where there it's little th it, it's it's little things you know it's not like I'm not going to jump in and pay for everything. We got a budget for this. We have a budget for that. And, you know, we kind of make them write things down and trying to just create little habits without being yeah. too overbearing. No, that's, that's actually, man. Uh, you definitely learning, learn from the past. Um, that's good. Uh, so again, like I said, getting to the end. So, you know, the, the final question, I guess I would ask you, uh, or not necessarily ask you, but if you can kind of share with guys what you're currently doing now, uh, you know, after it's all said and done, you're in your career. What uh, what's Eric Van been doing? So uh, my dad was a dealer for 25 years up until 2009 uh, car dealership. Mm -hmm. That's uh, it, we had a dealership in El Dorado, Kansas. He retired in I think 1998. Okay. So I'm back in the business. I've been in the business uh, since 2002. So I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm a general manager of a car dealership as we speak, a Lincoln store, and uh, have some saying we've got a big Ford store as well, too. So I've been doing that, lived in Atlanta for six years, um, basically mm -hmm. doing just going to going to dealerships that are kind of broken wow. and uh, try to fix them, spend two or three years and then kind of move on to other stuff. But we're probably going to play here. Where for man, you go and flip dealerships? What's that? I so said, are you a dealer flipper going in to flip dealerships? You know, those TV shows uh, about home flippers? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's more, I would say a fixer. How about that? It's, it's, yeah, fixer, okay. it's one of those things where I like to go into places that are really, I see a good opportunity, but they're just not well coached. Yeah. And you can put some processes and procedures in place. But this place where I'm at now in Charlotte is probably where I'm going to stay for at least another four or five years, uh, just okay. maybe longer than that, just for my kids to get through co uh, high school. Yeah. And then uh, my parents live here, so it, it's good to see my dad. He's 79. My mom's 71. Okay. So it's good for the grandkids to see them. So it's it's been a good deal. So that's kind of in my blood now. been doing it for 20 years. Awesome. Awesome. Well, cool, man. Um, yeah. Hey, that's that, that's it. Hopefully, it's quick enough. Get you in and out. No, it's good, man. Thank you, and appreciate what you're doing too. Uh, you know, I was telling my direct boss yesterday and another guy I work with um, about what I was doing today, and and uh, and you know, I take my son every morning. We talk about it as well too. And I got to give you kudos because this is not something that uh, most athletes are privy to. You know, we weren't, so it's just. I love seeing you taking that step and, and, and reaching out and giving back to what's going to be a legacy for you, hopefully down the road. 
Absolutely. I uh, appreciate you saying that. It, like I said, it's definitely a, a passion of mine. And, you know, hopefully we can get some kids to learn from it and, and uh, not be on an episode of, you know, 30 for 30 ESPN going. Broke. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, right. I've done my job. So, yeah, I definitely appreciate that, man. Yeah. It's a good deal. Well, I'll let you get going, man. It was good seeing you. And hopefully, uh, you know, at some point once this uh, this virus is over, man, get back to I some know. games and see, see you at a, at a game sometime. That'd be great. Good talking to you, PB. Hey, you too, man. Take care, brother. All right. Bye. Yep. Bye.